service uh, for me to say a few words uh, about Gordon Benningfield. Uh, I know many of you went to the memorial service in St Albans, uh, but Gordon's contribution uh, to the Countryside Restoration Trust uh, and to the countryside itself uh, has been so enormous that we felt that it was only right for me to say uh, a brief thank you uh, to Gordon uh, here today. We also welcome uh, Betty and Sarah and uh, it's made even more poignant because today uh, is Betty's 40th wedding anniversary. Uh, and so she has been very brave to have come and we're very grateful to her. I first met Gordon uh, in the 70s when we did a television programme together. Uh, he came to do a film uh, to talk about uh, my pet vixen, which I had at the time. And he was one of those people um, who I, I was attracted to straight away because we had so many things in common and we became friends immediately. Uh, our concerns and our enjoyments were the same. Our concerns were the countryside and what was happening to it and our enjoyment was the same as well in that we loved laughter and we loved doing country things and enjoying them as well. Uh, and so, yes, he did take the destruction of the countryside very seriously. He did take his painting very seriously. Uh, but he also enjoyed life and he loved life and laughter was part of his life. We discussed many times the destruction of the countryside that we saw. We saw hedges going, we saw water meadows going. We heard the skylark less the song thrush, less, all the things that he loved in his childhood in the country, he saw gradually decreasing. And it was a thing that worried us enormously. And as long ago as 1980, we went to the RSPB, the pair office. He just rang me up and he said, let's go and tell the RSPB what they should be doing. Uh, and we rang up uh, Ian Press, the director, and said, we want an appointment to come and see you. And we went there, and it was the time of the Wildlife and Countryside Bill. It was about to uh, uh, come into discussion in Parliament. And Gordon said, fine, sites of special scientific interest are fine, national parks are fine. What about the general countryside? What about the hedges? What about the nightingales? What about the barn owls? What about the things that are ours and are disappearing? Why should I have to go to an SSSI to see a, an orchid? Why should I have to go to a national park uh, to see a barn owl? I want to see them on the farmland. And you, as the RSPB, should be doing something about it. Unfortunately, dear Ian Press, with a scientist, uh, nothing wrong with that, David. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but he was locked in to special areas and Gordon actually banged on the table and said, what about the hedges? Uh, we got nowhere and we were shown the door. Um, we still spoke about it. Then Lawrence van der Post uh, came on the scene too. And again, we discussed what can we do? What should we do? And gradually the whole idea of the Countryside Restoration Trust came into being. And it was really the strength and perseverance of both Lawrence and Gordon uh, that made it all possible. When the idea formed, I said to them both, will you be trustees? The immediate answer was yes. Gordon could have had a very comfortable life painting pictures, going to nice places, but he actually decided that he had to make a stand and he fought for things. He fought for the things that those of us here believe a right to fight for. And he got into hot water with councillors, politicians, all sorts of people. And I'm glad he did. I'm glad he made them feel uncomfortable. And I hope the CRT are going to continue making them feel uncomfortable. Uh, because things in the countryside are wrong and we want them to be put right. 
Uh, he was appalled when his wonderful river Gade dried up. And I remember going with him along this river, and he said, that's where the trout lies, and the trout was there. There's the kingfisher, there's the king cup. But through over-abstraction, the river Gade dried up for two, three years, and yet they're still going to build even more houses near Hemel Hempstead and take even more water from it when the damage to the environment has, has been done. And so Gordon was a fighter and he fought for what he thought was right. He thought that the aims of the CRT were right and he was my right-hand man. Uh, I phoned him up several times a week. Whenever there was a problem, whenever there was a new idea, Gordon was there and he was there uh, to support me and we used to go and see ministers together, we used to go and see various people together for the CRT. Uh, and in the autumn we were seeing Meacher, Michael Meacher, nice man, saying, please do something about the water abstraction, please do something about the water meadows. Uh, and Gordon was steady, loyal, and he was humorous. Uh, and he, we had many, many happy days, as everybody who knew him had happy memories of him. Uh, I mean, the funniest one, one of the funniest ones was, I think it was at the game fair, when somebody uh, asked him what he did for a living, and he said, painter. And they said, well, can you give me an estimate for my bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> and then his brother um, has the same gene, because he rang me up, or, or Sarah passed on the message for <coughs> him, uh, and said, before you come to the memorial service, don't forget to wash your trainers. Um, I did more than that. I actually bought a pair of black leather shoes that I'm not wearing today. One of the funniest things, too, was down in the Brook Meadow, where my sheep are, that many of you will walk through this afternoon or have walked through already. Uh, we were doing something for Women's Hour, and we were going along saying, oh, Gordon was saying, oh, there's a red admiral butterfly in his day. And I was saying, oh, I can hear a, um, a goldfinch. And then Gordon would say, oh, and here's a flower of some description. And I heard this strange noise above. And uh, I thought it was going to be a kestrel. And I looked up and said, oh, and there's a parrot. <laughs> and, uh, and it came back to Gordon, who was convulsed on the floor with laughter. And there really was a parrot. But he was in no condition to carry on the broadcast because he was totally finished. And so Gordon was a fighter for the countryside, a man who loved life. And I think it was, I know that it was a privilege for all of us here who met him uh, to meet such a wonderful man. At the end of yesterday, after the first open day, I was walking through our little meadow, which I hope many of you will, uh, and I heard this, this wonderful mixture of melodies, the skylark and the willow warbler. And my immediate thought was, I must string up Gordon and tell him about this. And those of us who had the good fortune, he is still there in our thoughts because his impact was so real. I think we have to make sure in the CRT that Gordon's wishes for the countryside, his fighting spirit for the countryside, go on. And the greatest tribute to him can be our laughter and the lark song over every field. Thank you.